as a one, I know the team are being very grateful for their input. Uh, we are constantly monitoring the feedback and addressing concerns as we go, um, but I think it's important to recognise that um, we do recognise that this is really challenging. Um, and to get this right, we need to be challenged. We need to be confident that we put the best proposals on the table. And if people think we have not duly considered information, we need to hear from you. So we generally attempt to, cons to consider comments as, as we go. Workforce issues are one of those. And we're happy to answer some questions or our considerations on workforce if that's an area of concern tonight. And I'm going to pick up a few points as I go through this presentation. So how have we developed the options? Um, well, there are only two options. Um, we have been asked why. Um, we have previously circulated a breakdown of um, responses and our considerations and why we've dismissed other, other options. Um, and they are detailed in information that's circulated on Appendix 7. Because of time to I'm not going to go through those in detail. I'm happy to pick up questions through the evening if that's appropriate. Um, but we have discounted other options, the genuine reasons which are, are detailed. Um, we have looked at an evidence-based approach in putting forward the options that we have, and we feel that the options on the table are those that best consider the activity that we have available and all the messages that we've heard last loud and clear out of two stakeholder events <coughs> and direct conversation with the public and as part of the listening exercise that we held in February this year. Just a couple of key messages on the right that have been important for us to really consider is that we can see that in 1718, the activity data shows us that almost 50%, actually 47% of attendances to children's A&E were with minor issues. People who were discharged within two hours and who could have been seen either with a nurse or a pharmacist. When we looked at the activity walk for walking centres and minor injury units, 24% of the attendances were due to planned ongoing wound and dressing care. When we thought and considered the paediatric, the children's service offer, uh, we have benchmarked against areas and systems such as Liverpool, who have got, had really proven success with some of their paediatric developments. And we also want to uh, work across looking at the um, developing women's and children's services and about that um, keeping people well aspect. So this is the urgent care offer, but how does it buffer up with the wider offer for women and children's services? We don't want to look at a silo lens and not spot those wider opportunities. So the paediatrics, the children's services, the wound and dressing care, they all remain as part of that local community offer. The walk-in element for adults, um, we are looking to replace with same-day access to a GP or nurse because of that extension of uh, the GP offer, the primary care offer of GP and nurse appointments, which I'm going to explain in a moment, which is being driven by NHS England and is part of a national development. The Urgent Treatment Centre at Arrow Park, well, why, why are we putting it at Arrow Park? Well, despite having three walk-in centres and three minor injury um, units, um, when we looked at the activity data for last year, 33% of attendances into a &E absolutely could have been seen at a pharmacist or with a nurse. 14% um, could have gone to a GP. Um, so we've, we've clearly not got the urgent care offer right. Despite having six alternate community provision, um, we're still having a and &E not delivering its required performance, jeopardising patient quality and safety. So we have to rethink what the offer is and we have to think about how we get the messages out to help the public change behaviour and get the communication right. By co-locating at the Urgent Treatment Centre at Arrow Park, it means we can develop a really solid single front door. We can really invest with the capital investment to redesign behind ED and have a, a, a service that is fit for purpose to also improve access for GPs referring very poorly <coughs> people who are, who are attending their surgeries or indeed where they've done a home visit. So it's thinking in the round actually what is that, what are the urgent, um, tr oh, urgent um, services and what is that provision of the building and, and access the rooms etc and the diagnostics that we need on that site. 
So we do believe by setting up Arrow Park, it will, the urgent treatment centre will support the issues and the pressure felt at A&E by actually helping deal with that 33%. We don't need to go into A&E free, but that specialist clinical time for people arriving by ambulance who, who, or who turn up themselves um, needing urgent access and support. We can ensure that people have a range of full diagnostics, which does include things like MRI and CT scanning that are not available elsewhere in the community <coughs> at other sites. We also, one of the conditions, one of the 27 standards required by NHS England in developing an urgent treatment centre um, also mean that people, uh, patients have to have rapid access to specialist consultants, ED consultants, if they deteriorate. And we felt that actually on site means people have rapid access without the requirement of an ambulance potentially if they were in the community. And you can see the quote there by NHS England about some of the advantages if they are co-located. <coughs> and so I'm not going to go on that anymore. If people want the details, it has been provided and it is in appendix there about the other considerations that we gave before a uh, governing body made the uh, decision <coughs> to support the recommendation on the Arrow Park site. Uh, just lots of other slides now. Um, extending access. One concern and challenge raised in relation to is has been about well, okay, heard all heard the other, but what about the workforce, the availability of, of, of GPs to absorb the walking centre and minor and minor injury activity? Well, the current um, activity in walking centres and minor injuries is nurse led. There is an additional 1.8 million investment from NHS England for rural. And down the left hand column, you can see our assumptions on the activity. Um, rural has been one of the most advanced systems actually working with primary care to get additional GP appointments in. And from April this year, an additional 720 uh, GP appointments have been made available. That's by the CCG working with the federations in rural to move forward with that development. And those 720 are already in place. And this is about the 6 to late in the evening, Monday to Friday, and weekend appointments. From April, our intention, you can see the figures there, is to increase that um, to 1,440 uh, appointments a week. That's GP and nurse, not just GP, GP and nurse. Um, and that equates, when you look at us being able to pick up the activity from the current walking centre and minor injuries, people who do need to see a nurse, and for some, a GP, it would still leave 652 appointments per week available for additional um, need across across rural. <coughs> um, I'm not going to dwell because of time on all the points on the right hand side, um, but you can see there um, some of the, the, the uh, comments about that, that work in progress with, with primary care and with the federation, and there have been no escalated concerns around workforce to date. Wirral does not actually mirror them some of the national challenges that you've heard about struggling to recruit GPs. So very quickly, I'm not going to dwell on this slide, I think we've described the local offer, we've just tried to then reinforce what that local, is, local offer is down the left hand side. Um, and there's a few quotes there from people, so this is about actually improving the urgent care offer for people and how we would see that people would, would have an improved offer, being able to make multiple appointments on the same day rather than walk in and wait, etc. Um, just very quickly, um, there is just a slide if people wish to see this on Cheshire West and Chester activity assumptions. Um, so it does show there um, where the Cheshire West activity has gone to in terms of walking centres. 21% of walking centre activity was for 0 to 19 years from Cheshire West, that's 766 attendances last year. 79%, just shy of 2,900, were for people 19 plus. Um, I think it's important to recognise in the pink there, the top three reasons for attendances from Cheshire West. 27% for dressing and wound care, 11% for associated problems with limbs, e.g. leg pain, 6% um, for bites and stings that people could have got to pharmacy or see the nurse. Um, the others are much, much smaller, minor, minor, very minor numbers. <coughs> two points to pick up at the bottom is we have two dedicated public meetings for Cheshire West um, people, including councillors. The dates are on there and we are in a conversation about a further dedicated review scrutiny committee. And there's just to summarise, um, final bits on activity, these have all been provided. 
Um, but again, just if anybody does want to get underneath the data, this is just a pulled extract from what we have circulated. So last year, just shy of 110,000 attendances into the walk-in centres. It shows the breakdown. A couple of points I would pull from that slide are that the, the paediatrics, the children's not to 19 and the dressings, um, account for 47% of activity. We are continuing to offer that locally in those four hubs as either a bookable or a bookable and a walk-in option. The 38,500 um, uh, uh, appointments and tendencies that you need to see a nurse or a GP and we are absorbing as part of the extended access offer to primary care and we've just demonstrated that we can easily absorb that and that would be about the same day bookable appointment um, or you can still go to the urgent treatment centre. The two options are 24 hours or 15 hours a day and then you've just got the figures there for pharmacy and if anybody's concerned about the football, football into our own park um, our worst case scenario on the right hand side for option one, additional 30 people a day and 20 people a day for option two, that's assuming 15% of deflection, assuming that we don't get the messages right from day one, we recognise this will be an evolving offer, we'll need a strong implementation plan, um, we do need to change behaviours, we do need to help the public understand where to go for urgent care. So we've been conservative and played safe um, and we do believe that's, that's workable. So then just a summary of the key messages, this is about improving urgent care, there's no job losses uh, that's intentional, there may be uh, the need to work slightly different hours or slightly different location and there'll be an opportunity for skill development. It is not about prioritisation of the NHS um, and you can, you can see the other, the other key messages up there. Finally from me, what are our next steps? We are in consultation until the 12th of December. Um, as we've said, we continue to commit to analyse feedback and work with providers uh, on, the con on the conclusion of, of consultation um, in terms of sharing with key providers and stakeholders what the findings have been from consultation and working with those providers to uh, work through what the final recommendation is for the body. They will make a decision in April. Um, they will sit as part of the Joint Strategic Commissioning Board, but building body members will make that final decision. And we will commit to revisiting um, overview and scrutiny and um, post the decision to talk through the findings um, and what the next steps and recommendations are.